welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. It's just so miserable down here in Phoenix that it just, it's not even worth getting out and playing. The cars are running hot. It's stressful on them. It's just not, nobody wants to get out. There's some cars out there running and a lot of them have a, a lot less mods, a lot less power and it's, it's a little easier on them, I think. Some of the big power cars, um, there's, there's not many of them coming out and it's just a downtime right now to do some mods, change some things up. So I've been laying low, um, working on some things, trying to find out why we had a misfire for so long. And um, we ended up finding a few, a few things that needed to get changed on the car. You know, as you add more, <clears throat> more power, gotta have more fuel, so we had to get the bigger injectors. Now we got more, more fuel, more power. Spark, Spark is having issues. So we're trying to find out what the hell is going on. Well, more power, more spark, um, bigger fans, bigger pumps, alternators not keeping up. Voltage kept dropping. We're like, damn. So we swap the alternator out. Um, this thing runs at about 150 amps, I guess, and then kicks up to 220 when it needs it. Threw that thing on. Got more more uh, voltage to the controller, to the computer, but then I'm still having fluctuations. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Well, then the car wouldn't start. I'm like, what in the hell? You know, it's frustrating, you know. So, um, what we ended up doing, ended up, sorry, I'm trying to park right here. Um, what we ended up doing, well, I pulled, Pulled the car up, started looking at it, trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and uh, my freaking starter's jacked up. Come to find out, it's kind of a, a common thing on these when you get headers on them and you don't have any way to protect it, or you don't have any protection on it. The front end, the whole top of it melted off. It's weird. Um, so it'd been goofing with me here and there for about a week, and I'm like, what the hell? Well, starter's toast. So I get a starter throw another starter in and um, when I'm under there looking at it I see that the wire to the alternator has a, a freaking connector melted to it what ends up being one of my old uh, O2 sensors that was just there and it melted to the starter wire uh, some of the starter wire had come apart um, the sheathing on it so they ended up connecting somehow so I'm thinking that's where we're getting our irregularity with spark and power and sparked it the coils and everything is through that so replace the starter too and then we're like damn you know what let's just go through um we've been replacing a couple uh of the uh coils here and there trying to find that misfire we had in cylinder seven that we've been fighting and i haven't really really honestly been working at it the last couple months we've just been doing stuff around the house and um well come to find out we're like, screw it, let's just, uh, Dr. Bill over there at AEM says, let's just swap the whole coil pack, each side. So he pulled them, nice guy he is, he pulls them off his truck, puts them on my car on the dyno and says, that's it. So we swapped one side and then he takes, you know what, let's just swap the other side. Swap the other side. No more misfires. We got good voltage, it's holding. We got good spark. We got tons of fuel now with these 2200 cc's. And um, we test out the uh, the um, ESS three, the new three G. Uh, the new three GX has a three and three quarter inch inlet. The prototype had a four. Housing the volutes a little bit smaller, but they somehow managed to fit a four millimeter bigger wheel in there. So the impeller is four millimeters bigger, housing's a little bit smaller, but it's more uh, efficient. Uh, so we said, test it out. So ESS says, hey, let's uh, let's see what this thing will do. So we throw it on the dyno, we got our fuel, we got our spark, and uh, now we got our air, we got our boost. Spun that thing up on the dyno, 21.2 PSI, I think is what we ended up pushing, and hit 1,000, 1,014 horse on that thing. So just a tiny bit more than the original uh, prototype one, but holy crap, man, hits hard, spins up fast, and um, works great. So that's the production one. So they wanted to get some testing done on that. So we got that thing in, got it done, 
and uh, tested it out, and they, they love it. They love the results. Um, everybody's buying those things, should be loving those things. Uh, the quality's there, you can spin them up super high. Uh, the gearing is set so you don't have to run a tiny little 3.125 or a 3.2 pulley. Uh, you want a thousand horse, 3.3 pulley. You want to keep it a little more chill, run a bigger pulley, run a 3.7 or they go by millimeters. So mine's an 85 millimeter, run it up to a, a 90 millimeter, a 95 millimeter. Um, 95 or 90 will get you probably around 800 I believe, 95 will get you uh, right around 7 I think is what we were figuring. Um, that's what most people are running because they don't have a forged motor, but the the uh, you know, the options are endless and you don't have to run a tiny little pulley. So you get a bigger pulley, a bigger bite, and you don't have to worry about slippage, you know? So we got that thing all together and got it uh, got it to where we, we thought we were ready. Well, took it out to uh, Mexico and um, I mean, there's a badass car here in town. It's a C7Z. Uh, Whipple and nitrous that thing it moves out it hooks and books and there's no joke it, it goes and it's an auto car so you just step on that sucker and it rips um, I guess it's from Colorado it was 1200 horse 1350 torque was their peak I guess there I don't know if that's corrected uncorrected who knows I know it ran a 9.2 at 155 at Texas 2k so it's a fast car and um, I wanted to run, run the fastest car. Well, found found another limit. My uh, the uh, the clutch. I have a thousand horse clutch in there at the crank, and it finally decided that was that was enough. So it we got some good slippage in third, and then it just totally slipped out in fourth. Come to find out in fourth, also when I hit it, I blew out the bottom of my uh, my little poly tube coming down from the supercharger. So, found a limit of that too. Took an L, those guys are awesome. They had a great car that came ready to rip and, and they did. So, um, now it's time to uh, replace a little poly piping. I picked that up today. And get that thing in there and, and get this car back back running perfect again. It, it's running great. It's just getting the, uh, finding the little things, you know, that, that end up popping or breaking or, and we've got everything replaced. So it's just these little minor things that I got to adjust and, and account for. And I think we're going to be ready next time for them. And, um, they're, they're ready for a rematch. The car's ready to go all the time, it seems like. So we'll, um, we'll line that thing up again here soon. I'm going to go back home, start working on this. Just get this poly piping swapped out and uh, get myself some one stop here real quick at a PBJ. And we'll get this car going.